G'day ZKD here, back with some more Path of Exile, and today I want to share some of my analysis on the new unique chest, Kintsugi. And I also would like to uh, share a bit of a guide on how to make characters appropriately for it, uh, builds that best leverage it, and also some gearing tips to go with the unique as well. So I think that in my analysis, Kintsugi is as good as Lightning Coil, and in some builds, even better. Now, this is not the case for something like an armor build, where they can chuck Lightning Coil on and get even further mitigation. For them, Lightning Coil is going to be far superior. The ideal build for Kintsugi is a evasion dodge stacking character, essentially. Something that can give a chance for the buff that Kintsugi is all about, that 20% reduced damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. It's about getting that to be active as much of the time as possible, and if you do get hit, giving that a chance to reset. So I've done some research and some theory crafting and talked to Rory a little bit about the mechanics of this, and kind of here's what I come up with. So the unique overall first, and why I think it is actually really quite good, is that it's more versatile, firstly. It protects from some of the nasty high ele elemental damage spells that we're encountering now. Uh, in 2.3, GGG buffed a lot of spells in particular that were left over from years ago in the game and hadn't really been changed and in some cases were bugged and dealing very low amounts of damage. For example, Goatman's firing fireballs that would only do 30 damage. So uh, stuff like that has been fixed and as a result you may have encountered things in particularly high level maps such as sparkers and stuff that are actually doing a lot of damage now. So there's a lot more elemental damage in the game. Physical damage is probably still pretty overrepresented in terms of some of the biggest threats in the game. But Kintsugi also protects from those as well. The other thing is that this chest does actually allow for a decent amount of evasion and some evasion scaling as well. So you can actually play an evasion dodge character as an evasion dodge character, not just a lightning coil dodge character. It also puts far less pressure on your gear overall as well. Instead of that minus 60 lightning res, you have plus 30 fire res. That's a difference of 90 resistance on your overall gearing. And this makes for the rest of your gear being a lot cheaper. It makes for that to be a lot cheaper, but it also allows you to do things like get accuracy rolls on gloves and helms instead of resistances because those two slots where you had to get an extra 30 lightning res on your helm and gloves to make up for the lightning coil can now be dedicated to res uh, accuracy rolls which means you can put out a lot more damage and be a lot more effective especially as something like a crit bow character for example. So now I'm going to go through a bit of a list and some suggestions of things you can incorporate into your builds that work really well with Kintsugi and why. So the first thing is obviously and clearly evasion. Rocking evasion gear, using things like grace, getting evasion scaling on the tree, and using things like blind, the blind mechanic, or a stibnite flask, which gives you evasion and blind. Uh, these things are all very effective. Evading attacks, this is both physical and elemental attacks, means that you have much more chance for that reset to happen. So when you do occasionally get hit, there's pr it's going to be another four seconds before you get hit if you have enough evasion where most of these enemies aren't actually hitting you. Now when it comes to evasion scaling on the tree, I don't really recommend getting like all the evasion nodes or anything. Most of the good evasion nodes are actually the ones that are either just really, really efficient or are the ones that are coupled with other things like life. For example, the Ranger Life Evasion Start and also Revenge of the Hunted Cluster up above Ranger, which gives life evasion and physical damage. You're getting that kind of double whammy of uh, benefit there and getting some evasion. And then down by Duelist, you have things like Cloth and Chain, a two pointer if you're going and getting that Frenzy node and Golem's Blood, like many builds do. Then that gives you a bunch of all resist as well, which can make it easier to budget gear. That's a two pointer that you can pick up earlier on and then drop it later on once you have better gear and you don't need the resistances from that. I also suggest if you're going up to the Scion area to get like the Scion life wheel for example and you're going the right hand side, the two points for reflexes is really freaking good. That's 42% uh, increased evasion rating and plus 50 base evasion. That's a huge amount of evasion for two points and that's certainly worth it. So I don't really recommend doing things like getting the evasion Scion wheel but getting the two points for reflexes is certainly worth it if you're rocking Kintsugi. Now another thing that you can get on the topic of evasion is arrow dancing. Now arrow dancing is 
Not very popular, but it certainly has its place in the game and it can actually be very good. And Kintsugi builds is certainly one of the examples of where this can be really good. Now, one of the things that are, gonna, that are going to more commonly hit you are projectile attacks. So like skeleton archers and things like that, that are firing and kind of shooting their stuff all over the place. You know, while it's easy to hang back and not get hit by melee attacks and to just straight up manually evade melee attacks, when you see a melee attacker swing at you like a giant skeleton or something, try to swing at you, it's pretty easy to just sidestep most of that stuff. And if you just keep moving in Path of Exile, a lot of the time melee attackers don't even hit you. So Kintsugi on like ranged bow characters or even like Reeve characters or something are going to be getting very, very rarely hit by melee attacks already. So the loss of evasion for melee, the penalty to arrow dancing, is not a big deal. However, that gain in evasion against projectile attacks means the more common threat, the more common thing that's going to reset or cancel your Kintsugi buff is going to be mitigated by arrow dancing. So it's a really good choice in Kintsugi builds, especially if you're doing something like a bow build or something that has good range again like Reeve. Now another really good thing you can use, and this has always pretty much been the case for evasion characters, is in Feeble. Now this lowers enemy enemy accuracy in addition to giving you further mitigation as well. So it gives you that kind of like mitigation which offsets the, the idea of evasion where you occasionally get hit, you take a lot of damage, and Feeble helps with that. And the also the lowering of accuracy just makes the Kintsugi buff even stronger. So Enfeeble is a great choice. You can also, if you find some benefit to using Temp Chains in your build, you could also use that, and that does certainly have a positive effect. Slowing enemies down gives you more time to manually evade their attacks, and it also gives you more time for your buff to reset because the enemies are simply attacking slower. Now after evasion comes dodge, and dodge is going to be key in this for sure. So you can obviously get phase acrobatics and acrobatics, and I highly recommend nowadays getting phase acrobatics. As I mentioned, a lot of elemental spells are becoming much more dangerous, and there's also of course the physical spells to watch out for as an evasion character too, and phase acro is going to help with that. And then more importantly when you're rocking Kintsugi is the fact that spells will will cancel the buff, and the buff protects against spells, and you want, you know, you want the buff to be up as much as possible. You don't want to be getting hit by fireballs and having that buff being cancelled all the time. So phase acrobatics is a really good choice, and I highly recommend getting the full acro and phase acrobatics cluster on a Kintsugi wearing build. There's also at series step, the unique boots, which gives some spell dodge. Again, another really good choice. You can also use a Quartz Flask for some dodge and spell dodge, and you can use that instead of a Quicksilver, rock some Adrenaline on it, and use it as a bit of a slower Quicksilver, but a safer Quicksilver. It's a really good choice in Hardcore. It also, of course, gives you the phasing effect, which makes it easy, easier to manually dodge because you can actually walk through enemies and get to the other side of them, meaning that they can't hit you if they're targeting the other side of them. A new amulet, Hinokora's Sight, is also a good choice, giving you dodge and spell dodge. And of course, if you are playing a build that can utilize Raider, or if Raider is the optimal class for you, and Raider is extremely good now, you also have the Raider's Dodge 4-point line, and the Evasion on Onslaught line. These are both incredibly powerful with Kintsugi. So I think actually that Kintsugi is a best in slot defensive chest for most Raider builds. Now another very important mechanic for Kintsugi builds, and this has always been the case for Evasion, but even more so the synergy is improved here, and that's Immortal Call. Now typically this is going to be cast when damage taken Immortal Call, linked to increased duration. Now what happens here is if you get hit by a rapid series of attacks, and you know, that can happen, especially if you pop an entire pack of those Quill Beast thingies and they all fire their quills at you, then you can get hit by a couple of those in a row. Now Immortal Call buys you half a second to a second and a half, or maybe even up to two seconds, depending on your build, of physical immunity, which means you don't take any damage from those things, and that saves you for that, and that allows you to get safe and get time for that Kintsugi buff to come back up. Now, of course, if you can work endurance charges into your builds as well, in addition to the defensive properties of that, if you do get hit, it also feeds your Immortal Call setup, making it last longer and giving you more safety time for that Kintsugi buff to come back up. Now you can get that through Warlord's Mark. Warlord's Mark is a great curse in general because it gives you life leech and mana leech, and it also gives you plenty of endurance charges on kill. It funds an Immortal Call cast on damage taken setup like no other, so Warlord's is great in some builds. Of course, you could always manually cast Enduring Cry if you don't mind manually uh, casting that, and you know doing that every now and then to give yourself a little bit of re regen boost and get those endurance charges up is not a bad idea. Now one final thing I wanted to mention here, which was I found really interesting, when I checked with Rory, I found out that Reflect does not actually reset the buff. Reflect, for this purpose, doesn't count as taking a hit. So while Kintsugi mitigates Reflect damage, and indeed it does, as long as the buff is up, 
it does not actually get reset when you take reflect damage. So if you're doing a reflect map and you're always taking a little bit of energy damage, Kintsugi is still gonna be working just fine in those maps and that actually won't be resetting that buff. And if you run into the occasional reflect rare, shooting them won't actually reset the buff, but you still take that mitigated reflect damage. Freaking fantastic, such a, such a nice extra little thing to know about that chest that really improves its power even further. Now you don't have to use everything I've mentioned in this list of course, the purpose was to give you guys a good list of things that you could build from to add to your character. Using all of them indeed would be overkill and you'd be a super tank I'm sure, but that's not really very necessary, most of the time you want it, you know, you have to dedicate some of your investment towards offense of course. So something like playing an evasion dodge bow build using at series step is going to work really well. Or playing something like a Reeve Raider with Infable Blasphemy is going to be really, really tanky with this new chest. So overall, I think it's pretty great stuff. Hopefully this analysis and guide here has helped you guys in getting this chest working effectively in your build so you can realize the true power of it. That is it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.